Hi guys, I welcome you all to day 51 of our anthropology lecture series. Uh, so today we are going to start with a very important topic and uh, probably, uh, not probably but uh, this topic is that which has a lot of weightage. Every year questions are going to come from this so I need you to understand everything. I am going to take you very slow. We are going to read about every thinker, everything. So I hope you like it and uh, so let's get started. So today's topic is anthropological theories, evolutionary school. Okay. So now basically you need to understand first when we are talking about uh, anthropological theories. What is anthropological theories? Basically you can say that they are the basis of what anthropology means. We know that anthropology is the study of humans in terms of time and space. That means hum unko, we are trying to read about anthropology we are trying to read about the human evolution in terms of totality right so that is what it is so in classical evolutionism that is you know evolutionism maybe there are two school of thoughts so one is the classical evolutionism that you see here and then there was a new evolutionism school which came uh, later to you know correct the criticism that was you know given to this school so then they came to correct this school so we will read this later for the time being this is not the topic of our discussion right now so we will study only this much in classical evolutionism in the first part so now when we study as I have told you it is the basis anthropology to understand anthropology you need to understand the theories of anthropology how anthropology developed as a school what was the subject matter what was the need for it this is all whatever you can do catharsis of this school uh, catharsis of this uh, this subject now that will ultimately root you down to the theories right so that is what uh, that is how we are going to see the evolution not in only anthropology but you know how it developed not as a school only evolution is not only a school that we are going to read we are also going to see a transformation in the subject the contemporary changes how it evolved everything right so now let's uh, start uh, you know with the evolutionism school first of all so you need to understand your classical evolutionism thena even they were divided into three different schools because you know not everything came from one uh, set of scholars right so there were different people who had their own theories but largely they were uh, put in one school because the the idea the basic premises were same right so british school may you can say there was taylor and fraser jo humare point of discussion bhi rahenge aise to bahut sare there are many many uh, thinkers that are that are there in anthropology but they are not the part of our syllabus so we are going to uh, contain ourselves to that much and if anywhere i feel ki you need the reference of any other thinker i will give you that also so british school mein we are going to read about taylor fraser then comes the german school Isme there was Bastian, Bachefen, but they are not the point of discussion for us. So we will just understand what the school was, not both in that. And then in American, you will have your Morgan, right? That is our, uh, well, that is one of the person that we, are, we have to read about, right? So this is what it is. So now let's start. Today we are going to do uh, the basic tenets because for all the schools, the basis that is why they are put all in the classical evolutionism because they are talking about mostly the same things so we'll do this and then we'll try and finish taylor also right so let's get started so basically evolutionism evolutionism would be what the study of evolution right so evolution ka study would be evolutionism so basically evolution kya hota hai see uh, as of now we have studied from when uh, you can say from organic evolution where we studied the darwin's theory synthetic theory of evolution then we came to more uh, you know like anatomical changes that happened over the course of the uh, phylogenetic changes that happened over the course of evolution in humans how we went into genus homo and how we became the present homo sapiens sapien this is also evolution but this was biological evolution but as we have talked that we are going to read about uh, humans in 
terms of time and space and in totality that means only reading about biological evolution se kaam nahi chalega because human is a social being you know it lives in a society so to to see its evolution we need to see its socio cultural evolution also how the man evolved from a very primitive state of hunting and gathering to today's modern civilized societies right so that is what it is when we are talking about evolution here it is nothing to do with the biological evolution so one of the thing the word evolution sunke hame bahut hi यू नो एक बायोलॉजिकल फीलिंग आती है बट दिस इज नॉट द बायोलॉजिकल टर्म्स वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कल्चरल एवोल्यूशन सो हियर वी आर ओनली गोइंग टू लिमिट आर सेल्स टू कल्चरल एवोल्यूशन ऑफ मैन राइट बिकॉज बायोलॉजिकल तो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड राइट सो लाउ लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड एवोल्यूशनिज्म इज द स्टडी ऑफ एवोल्यूशन एंड इन पर्टिकुलर कल्चरल एवोल्यूशन हेयर ओके सो नाउ एवरी every thinker that was there in the school they believed that there was a gradual process of change from a simple society to a complex a homogeneous uh, homo uh, homogeneous society to heterogeneous society and from uncertainty to certainty now try to understand i will just give you three examples one is hunting foraging and gathering societies second i'll give you an agricultural society and third i'll give you a society which has script metallurgy science and tech etc okay basically a civilization okay so here if you can see the society was a lot simpler right as compared to what you will find here so yahan pe i can say a complex society so the journey the gradual process from simple to complex one thing homogeneous because we knew that there were no no hierarchies systems were more egalitarian so homogeneous society uh, and here very there are hierarchies then there are in even in one religion there'll be so many castes then even in one uh, you know one country so many religions so heterogeneity in every sense right not only that then occupation mein there are so many types of occupations that are there today yahan pe only hunting gathering is going on but here everything has so much of heterogeneity and from uncertainty to certainty that means ki somewhere down the line we can say today we are a lot like secure in the sense for example they didn't even know ki next day they would get food or not or next day the whole population would get wiped due to some uh, you know natural calamity but today in many sense we can control or manipulate the uh, world you know as as uh, you know uh, anthropogenic may uh, it may sound but that is the truth many many a times we are able to do it so therefore we can say that from uncertainty to a journey of certainty has you know uh, th- it it has been a journey right so that is what evolution they are talking about and in particular we are talking about cultural evolution so this school believes that culture or its institutions as a whole have gradually evolved in a unilinear sequence stage after stage now what are they trying to say same example hunting foraging then agriculture and then metallurgy script wala science and tech wala civilized society theek hai if these are the three things i can largely say that i am drawing a very unilinear thing ki iske baad yahi hoga after this this is going to happen only and like that so it's a very unilinear pattern that i'm trying to draw everything is going to happen stage by stage it's not like iske baad directly can it be possible that hunting foraging gathering ke baad you can directly shift to a society which has um, script metallurgy science and tech it's not possible right that means you can't skip this ke- stage and go to this because this is going to be very important in invention or the next step right so that is what it is it is trying to say that every place culture is more or less going to develop this way only and humne dekha hai right when we were reading about the biological evolution also i tried to uh, deliberately put every uh, cultural evolution ka perspective there to make you understand that nothing is happening in isolation everything is together intricately dependent on each other right so after hunting gathering there be never uh, that uh, you know the apex apex stage so to say will come it is not going to happen so it is going to happen gradually unilinearly 
एंड स्टेज आफ्टर स्टेज सो आई होप यू गॉट द मीनिंग ऑफ इट ठीक है सो इवन इफ यू डेंट गेट इट प्लीज लुक एट इट अगेन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट सो लेट्स गो ऑन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सी नाउ वॉट वर द बेसिक प्रमाइस ऑन द ऑन विच दे वर यू नो ट्राइंग टू पॉस्टुलेट अ थ्यूरी और ट्राई एंड get to a conclusion basically if i have to tell you long and short their theory was that uh, they they there are three stages okay let me go to the the other slide only there are three stages first is savagery first is savagery then then be, there'll be barbarism and then there'll be civilization so basic long and short of story is that in evolutionary school and in classical evolution they believe that these are the three stages that every human society has gone through and will uh, eventually go uh, or try and get towards a civilized society theek hai so this is first thing that means they they are trying to say that every society started from being a savage theek hai then there came an intermediate intermediate stage of being barbaric and then civilized society these are the three stages which from which a human social uh, or human society will in evolve and they believe that since i'm saying every society that means they are putting emphasis on a fact that man everywhere thinks alike right because how is that possible ki every society will uh, have these three stages and will evolve in this unilinear fashion only because they believe that man thinks alike that means there is a concept of psychic unity psychic means your psyche your mental makeup your your mind how it works and psychic unity unity means similarity kind of thing okay so that means first thing they are saying there is a psychic unity second thing they are going to say there is a unilinear pattern that's going on and these are the three stages that a uh, any human society is going to go this is long and short of it now how did they come to this conclusion and there are many more uh, things also it is not that simple so we are going to study about that okay so first thing they they uh, came to this because they uh, developed a concept of culture parallels now what is this what is cultural parallels i'll tell you uh they are trying to draw see culture parallel ko draw karne ke liye you need to first compare the societies because you are drawing parallels in societies that means you need to compare the societies so comparative method will also come with the concept of culture parallels so what they are saying na they are taking two societies for example we'll take the west and we'll take the eastern civilizations okay just for now see uh western and eastern is also going to play a major role here because you know uh historically see every subject is related to each other so if you try and understand things with a larger perspective it will be more easy for you to understand now see how i am uh, intricating history with anthropology now see see uh when west became industrialized i'm taking you back to the industrialization right so after industrialization you knew that uh, they had a lot of resources they had a lot of goods and services they had already uh, you know uh, invented the continent of america so they were extracting resources from there also india was colonized and many other countries were getting colonized or colonized Uh, much before india right so what what were they they were trying to understand the people they were ruling right because f- to for them every new, every other culture was a new culture and even when the it it was a kind of first globalization right where people were interacting with each other from so far isse pehle uh, india china se trade kar raha hoga china thoda apne aage piche walon se but there was not massive movement around the continent right this uh, continents this only happened when industrialization took a very uh, it it happened post industrialization and it was the need of the colonist to study the people they were visiting because for them it was a very new concept because they must have not felt ki people would be so different from them theek hai so that is where their need 
arose to understand the people they were dealing with and then the concept of anthropology also as a subject began because then you full fledgedly started to study humans human society human culture theek hai so one one thing was this and second thing was when they are trying to understand the other people they are trying to compare different societies different cultures theek hai and based on that they came to some certain conclusions okay and one more thing there'll be a bias that you will always see because when anybody who is studying for example they were industrialized and many eastern civilizations were not or way bef- uh, you know they were way ahead in terms of industrialization theek hai so what will they think their culture is more superior as compared to the world that is a genuine feeling which will come to somebody because us time tak these concept of uh, cultural relativism had not taken so much of ground so i'm just trying to make you understand the background of it so if you understand the background now try and understand the theory i i won't take you too much into that details because then we'll not be able to complete the topic so basically what they were doing they were encountering new cultures and they they had their own culture also which they thought it was very superior theek hai so they started to compare these cultures with their own culture and said ki okay maybe if they saw uh, saw themselves as civilized so they said okay maybe this culture is not that uh, you know uh, behind us so maybe this is a barbaric culture this is a savage culture because tribals many places where they saw tribals they thought they were very uh, behind their level of development right so this is how first they were doing comparative methods like this looking at different cultures and second they were also taking uh, uh, things from the history so they also uh, took a very historical approach historical kaise matlab wo apne culture ka bhi ek comparative analysis kar rahe the it was like even if we take the west culture only theek hai they were looking at their culture also from starting beginning to till the date of study theek hai so comparative not only with the other cultures but comparative study of their own culture and how they evolved so isko hum bolenge historical approach and comparative approach and culture parallel either se aaye so what was culture parallel so they saw maybe if they are like at stage 3 and any culture who is at stage 2 they would all matlab believe na that okay we have gone through this stage or maybe anybody is at stage 1 so they will say okay we had been through this stage many years back right so this is how they were drawing culture parallels that means how did they say ki every society would first be a hunter gatherer forager then you know marginal cultivation would come then agriculture would come settled communities would come and then uh, civilization script metallurgy because they saw they compared the different cultures and they came to this conclusion okay this is how the sequence is going parallelly in different places right so this is how they tried to study that evolution i hope i am making sense to you guys right so historical approach i hope you understand comparative approach not only uh, comparing different cultures but also their own culture from time to time so stages can be established by speculating historical explanation obviously speculation you will also see speculation because i'll tell you this in criticism and also they were trying to uh, make a story out of it na so there was a stage which is savage usme basically they will keep a hunting gathering societies which are very like egalitarian there is no stratification no hierarchies societies are very simple so this is how they were drawing some historical explanations of things theek hai psychic unity i have told you and then survivals of the past yes so uh, when they were studying about all of this na so they said ki ultimately the journey is going to be from savage to being barbaric to civilized theek hai but even in is in this journey you know there are going to be certain survivals or relics of the past what is this now survival of the uh, past the term was given by taylor but then morgan also believed in a concept like that even bachefon 
so all of them believe basically in a concept like relics of the past somebody would call it relics somebody would call it traces so it is one with the same thing because many kya bole ultimately they are all put into the same category of evolutionists so basic premise would be the matlab mostly same thoda bahut here and there would be there theek hai so now what this uh, relics of the past is for example today in the era of mobile phones where everything is happening through a mobile phone we still see that some people have a landline just uh, you know it it makes them feel that you know these were also cert- some times you know ya yeah, fir you can say also there was a time when uh, floppies used to come then cd ka concept aaya then pen drive ka concept aaya theek hai so this is how the the technology material non material things are evolving in this world theek hai but we'll still uh, still see a cd at somebody's place feel feel so much nostalgic na usse pehle tape tapes bhi hote the right so that is how uh, you know even certain things stay with you theek hai just as a mark of something you will keep it and it will become a relic of the past or survival of the past it means that though it does not serve any purpose today but you know it people are still carrying on those things to even today theek hai iska ek example i'll give you aage ye to material examples hogi na choti choti examples you can take just to understand people have as a mark of you know just nostalgia landline hai ghar pe abhi bhi even it is of no use today right so this is how the classical evolutionists were thinking and uh, perceiving the things I know this is going to be tough for the person who is reading it for the first time but then anthropological theories are a little uh, tough to understand but I am trying to relate every aspect of it so that you have a very holistic understanding and if you do not understand it please watch it again I'm sure you're going to understand it so now uh, if you have understood the basic premise of the theory we are going to come on uh, Taylor so taylor was the first person in the sense that he was the one who who kind of you can say that who developed the discipline anthropology so if uh, we say na father of organic evolution somewhere is uh, darwin so you can say father of uh, cultural evolution or social anthropology or cultural anthropology is uh, taylor right because in a way he started the subject theek hai so he he was a student of political science and linguistics he played a pivotal role in creating a separate discipline of anthropology in europe okay so he was from the british school okay just remember that he is from the british school and his contributions just if you need to understand a little bit basics of him was he wrote many books like mexico and mexican ancient and modern okay then there was primitive culture in which he gave the definition of culture also which we have studied in the culture wala chapter right then he also wrote a book anthropology an introduction of study of uh, an an introduction to study of man and civilization so this is just for you to get a brief uh, background of him ki though he was because anthropology never existed as a subject okay he was a student of political science and linguistic but then when he was studying he eventually uh, kind of got an interest to read more about people how they behave how they have evolved so then he developed a altogether new school of uh, discipline okay so then the journey of anthropology also in a way started so first school was definitely classical evolution so if we have to talk about only taylor and his contributions we would say फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल तो हमने बोला ना इन प्रिमिटिव कल्चर वी रेड अबाउट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ कल्चर नाउ आई हैव नॉट पुट इट हियर बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन द कल्चर वाला चैप्टर एंड इफ वी स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग द थिंग्स अगेन द लेक्चर्स आर गोइंग टू गेट वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग ठीक है सो बट आई जस्ट टेल यू ही सेट दैट कल्चर इज ऑल दोज बिलीव मॉरल्स वैल्यूज नॉलेज दैट वी अक्वायर एंड ऑल अदर केपेबिलिटीज दैट वी एक्वायर एज अ मेम्बर ऑफ द सोसाइटी ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ ही डिफाइंड कल्चर सो इट वॉज अ वेरी ब्रॉड डेफिनेशन ऑफ कल्चर दैट मीन्स ऑल वैल्यूज मॉरल्स एवरी थिंग दैट वी एक्वायर फ्रॉम और लर्न फ्रॉम द सोसाइटी इज कल्चर राइट सो इट इज अ ब्रॉडली एक्सेप्टेड डेफिनेशन 
it is one of the most relevant definitions so that is one of its contribution because he made us understand a lot about culture similarly he gave a definition of religion also we had uh, recently studied it in the religion chapter at least wo aap nahi bhule honge so he sa- said that it is belief in the supernatural beings right so although it was a criticized definition but then also it holds a relevance to us then when if we uh, if we have to particularly talk about what he did as a classical evolutionist so now that we are going to see theek hai so first of all jo survivalism ka concept hai na that again i'm saying that uh, some things just as a matter of ritual or just as a matter of a uh, thing remains in the modern societies even though it has no purpose to serve but it is just a relic of the past theek hai so this is what they believed when they saw many cultures across the globe they saw okay there are certain things that remain even if they have no purpose but they remain just as a matter of a ritual in uh, societies so he took a example of kuwait kuwait kya hota hai basically in this uh, the males try to enact the the labor pain of the woman during at the chi- time of child birth okay so this is and uh, now this is a very unusual practice okay this was prevalent in a mat- this used to be prevalent in the matrilineal societies but now when you see it in a patrilineal kind of societies males enacting out labor pain that looks very uh, odd na so then what will you think what was the reason to have it in a patrilineal society right because matrilineal mein fir bhi hum samajh sakte hai ki you know they a little bit we, we we can say domination or we can say a lot more female oriented thoda sa there was the system but in patrilineal though there is no concept of female and female domination or whatsoever right so in a patrilineal society a ritual like kuwait looks very un- misfit right so that is how they def- they define survivalism as relics of the past that is there in many societies many cultures are there you can just find many things in your culture also which you are just doing as a matter of practice and holds no relevance today right so is pe hi abhi the recent movie of uh, amitabh bachchan if you guys have must seen it uh, i do not remember the name of the movie it uh, features rashmika mandana also they are talking about this only na they are doing the funerary rituals of the Uh, mother of uh, you know rashmika mandana and and she always questions her father ki what is this why are we doing this so all of that theek hai i hope you now understand it so first thing is this theek hai abhi tak lekin this is also just a thing that has come out of the classical evolutionist theory agar mota mota bolna ho to classical evolutionist theory is all about being uh, passing through unilinear stages right which is savagery barbarism and civilization right so then evolutionary sequence and this uh, taylor tried to find evolutionary sequence in all social institutions that are there for example in religion he said we studied in the religion chapter that taylor believed animism was the first kind of first kind of or the basic most religion right so for him animism was the first kind of religion then beech mein animatism totemism all of these came but milestone next milestone was polytheism theek hai which you can say according to him would be a barbaric religion savage religion would be animism theek hai and then civilized religion he considers monotheism as civilized religion now isme bahut problem hai you can see very well that this this uh, full explanation has a lot of problem but this is how they believed and they have explained their things theek hai so marriage mein they believed that there was primitive promiscuity that means nobody had no marriage rituals with nobody and everybody was everybody's sexual partner or anybody was anybody's sexual partner so humanity started from there then people started to get into polygamous marriages and then finally came the monogamous marriages so this is how 
it it defines in the terms of savage and then barbaric and civilization so you can see everything is getting connected to savagery barbarism civilization because this is the unilinear sequence that they are talking about and isme technology mein bhi similarly hoga first technology would be savage technology kya hogi hunting foraging gathering then barbaric would be agriculture then technology uh, sorry civilized kya hoga मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी साइंस एंड टेक्स स्क्रिप्ट मेटोलॉजी ऑल ऑफ दैट ठीक है सो दे ट्राई टू फाइंड दिस सीक्वेंस इन एवरी सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट थिंग देन ही यूज स्टैटिस्टिकल टूल्स ओके सो नाउ दिस वॉज ऑल्सो हिज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट ही नॉट ओनली दिस दैट ही ड्रॉ ही ड्रू दिस होल सीक्वेंस इन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कल्चर्स बट ही ट्राई टू state these facts through statistics that means for example he did survey of 28 to 80 uh, two families theek hai where he saw that wherever there was patrilineal societies na they were having patri uh, local residents also now this might look very uh, normal to you ki agar patrilineal society hai to patri local residents to hoga but this is not the case it is not so common as it looks many places there are societies that are matrilineal but they might have a neo local residents right we have studied about that or there are even even today in a patriarchal society today we have neo local residences right F- families are nuclear so it does it is not as uh, clear as it looks so he tried to show these uh, his uh, whatever his uh, tenants were with the help of statistics right so this was his contribution you can say then uh, a lot of criticism he he was flagged with a lot of criticism a because he was you can say anyways the first person to start a thing theek hai so galtiyan to hongi of course that is there is no चांस दैट गलतियाँ नहीं होंगी राइट बिकॉज ही स्टार्टेड इन अ वे राइट द सेकेंड थिंग इज ही एंड ऑल द क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशनिस्ट वर आर्म चेयर एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट ना वॉट इज आर्म चेयर एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट आई जस्ट मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड दे वर द पीपल फ्रॉम द वेस्ट हु वर ट्राइंग टू मेक अ पैन वर्ल्ड थेरी जस्ट बाय सिटिंग एट देर होम इन द वेस्ट एंड नॉट ट्राइंग एंड गोइंग टू एनी पार्ट ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड just making theories sitting at their home on the basis of the travel logs theek hai history books stories autobiographies of people so if i say i've n- never seen gandhi i've just read a book on gandhi or maybe a 2 3 4 5 books on gandhi would it do any justice to him it would not do any justice to him or maybe any other personality like b r ambedkar or maybe post uh, sorry uh, pre independent era ki if i write a book i have never seen anything of it i have never seen a person from that era i will not be able to do justice to it right because i'm sitting at my own place inadequate knowledge what can i give as a, it would just be my opinion it cannot be something which is going to be the gospel truth right so this is what it was inka problem ye tha ki they were armchair anthropologist they were the people who were sitting at their home reading certain history books certain autobiography tra- travel logs and based on that they were trying to make pan world theories which were grossly wrong a because uh, they were highly ethnocentric in doing that ethnocentric we have talked about that ethnocentric kya hota hai that means you are keeping your culture your things in the in the apex or in the center of everything and saying this is the best uh, you know best level or standard that everybody should achieve and ranking other cultures other societies based on your culture just because you think that having a script having a Uh, having in, having being industrialized is the apex thing that you need to achieve that means what what is this for example india today is a polytheistic country even till today to iska kya matlab hai are we not uh, civilized so that me that means their way of judging things was not the correct way possible right because we we are still civilized but we still have a polytheistic religion that means these things cannot define what uh what 
basis you should make for a civilized society or a barbaric society like that for example tribals even till today have a lot more you can say the concept of women empowerment though they are not thinking about it but women voice is heard so they have very progressive ideas towards women so iska kya matlab hai will you categorize them as savage or would you categorize them as civilized then so this whole premise was grossly wrong so this was the first thing uh, i am not going to take you in the details of it you just understand this much ki highly highly ethnocentric hai and this was the major criticism given by franz boa and we are going to read about franz boa in the next chapter so uh, sorry in the next uh, lecture so do not worry about that and he also criticized the comparative method comparative method was this only na you're comparing other cultures from the lens of your own and saying yours is the best and now every other has to live up to your standards so this was grossly wrong then different stages have already told you for example polytheism in civilized societies so what will you say now are we not civilized or our religion is not civilized we have a history of a uh, you know india's history can go back to even dates back to that of the west right so how are you going to judge what are your premises are very very questionable here then source of study again history books travelogues uh, they are their opinions they are not the correct uh, way to जज समबडी अगेन अगर आप किसी को जज कर रहे हो बट देन योर एविडेंस इज ऑल्सो नॉट करेक्ट राइट सो दैट इज ऑल्सो प्रॉब्लम देन डिफ्यूजनिस्ट एंड फंक्शनिस्ट ऑल्सो उनको बहुत ज़्यादा क्रिटिसाइज किया ना और डिफ्यूजनिस्ट बेसिकली थोड़ा थोड़ा बता देती हूँ नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इज गोइंग टू बी नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी डिफ्यूजन ओनली और उसके बाद फंक्शनिज्म आएगा सो थोड़ा थोड़ा तो फंक्शनिज्म में तो आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दे मोरली दे मोर टॉक्ड अबाउट फंक्शन वॉट function or need it serves for the human so they were saying ki forget about whatever happened in the past why are you so fixated with the past just try and see what need or function it serves to you in the present day so this is how they refuted the evolutionist and uh, diffusionist isliye refute kiya because they were saying uh, at, as they say matlab mera hai classical evolutionist were saying that all through the world different different cultures and civilization are going to evolve themselves into unilinear way but this is also not true na for example we took railways as it is from the british right so what is that this we didn't develop railways on our own right they gave it to us i mean that was possible because it got diffused into our culture through the contact with british that means not every landmark or not everything is going to happen or not every culture is going to develop everything on its own there is a major uh, contribution of diffusion that they were not looking at evolutionist missed that there was also diffusion that happened so isliye unko criticize kiya then survival of the past now functionalist uh, you know Uh, criticize them a lot on survival of the past what was a survival of the past that it has no purpose things have no purpose they are just today there as a matter of ritual they are relics of the past but functionalists say no anything which survives today has to have a function a need it should be it should uh, satisfy some human need otherwise it is not possible that it is going to survive so unke liye criticism ye tha ki there are no relics of the past everything has to have a purpose and that is why it is still there right so this is the whole uh, cr- criticism which was flagged towards taylor and you can give this as a uh, criticism for the whole school also right so it's it's for the both of them i hope you understood the chapter so if you have to conclude you can say that uh, though you know there was a lot of criticism given to the school and to taylor but there is nothing uh, you cannot take away from the fact that in a way taylor started a new school he started the discussion of how the the culture societies have evolved and it gave a new direction to anthropology pehli baat it gave a new direction to the research work and many others who followed him 
right so this is how you can make a, a balanced uh, conclusion and give your answer so i hope you like this lecture guys if you like it please like share and subscribe any doubt post in the comment section below i am going to take you very very slowly maine isliye se fast taylor cover kiya hai i'm not covering fraser and morgan today because i want you to understand each scholar because each scholar itself has a lot of importance and can be asked अलग से द स्कूल कैन बी आर सो आई एम गोइंग टू टेक यू थ्रू द होल जर्नी डो नॉट वरी अबाउट इट आई होप यू लाइक द लेक्चर गाइज इफ यू डू प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब गाइज थैंक